Hey everyone, and welcome to another episode of Let's Argue, where I go online, I welcome your hot takes, unpopular opinions, and tough questions. I answer the best ones. In this, in this segment, you know what happens in here by now. Let's go! DJ Khaled is the most talentless artist in hip hop today. The reason he's successful is because of his shitty preachy catchphrases that he shouts over half decent songs. Yeah, DJ Khaled, um, I, I would say he's a bad artist, but only really because he's not really an artist. You know, he's a guy who essentially kind of comes in, he just randomly picks a bunch of people who are very popular, or people who can produce a very sweet, summery, catchy beat. He pays them all to take part in this artistic orgy, this lowest common denominator gangbang, where they all try to write the song with the widest appeal possible. And that's, that's pretty much DJ Khaled in a nutshell. He is essentially a marketing guru. He looks at what tones and appeals and demographics certain artists and sounds appeal to. He tries to craft sounds and aesthetics based on those things by just essentially playing director and kind of having those people uh, appear in those positions to make certain sounds appear on certain songs. At the end of the day, I wouldn't call it very artistic as he is kind of like a glorified A&R guy, but still, I wouldn't say that he does nothing. I wouldn't, I wouldn't say he does nothing. That is the nicest thing I can say. Genius is ruining this generation's listening experience by spoon feeding one person's interpretation of an artist's lyrics rather than letting the listener define those lyrics themselves and connect to the music on that level. I'm gonna have to give a slightly hard disagree to this comment because it sort of seems to function on the premise that just merely being exposed to someone's thoughts or opinion or interpretation of a piece of music before you formed your own uh, is, is inherently bad in some way, and I don't think it is. Like, what if instead of going on Genius and finding out about what a song means there, a friend told you, or your parents, or you, I don't know, uh, read it in a book. Granted, some of the interpretations of songs and lyrics on Genius are a little incomplete or reductive or completely nonsensical. And sometimes fans do go into some really nutty conspiracy theories when they think there is an incredible amount of depth there in an album's meaning when there really isn't. But again, that's not specifically an issue with genius. People do tend to run away with their interpretations of art. I mean, Beatles fans used to think Paul McCartney was dead because of some shit they heard hidden in a record. So, I don't know, whether it's through your own listening experience or just reading some annotation on genius, however you come to understand what a, a song is going for or what the meaning or intent is behind a track is, is how you arrive to it, I guess. Six Nine makes good music, you just don't want to give bad people good scores. I mean, I'll admit and I have said, I do think Six Nine has some bangers, some songs that are entertaining on their own and in a single context. But the Day 69 mixtape as a full listening experience sucks ass because 6 9 approaches pretty much every track with the same flow, the same delivery, the same everything, to the point where listening to the tape is like getting hit with deja vu over and over and over. I appreciate that I guess he tried to change things up vocally a little bit with his new track Fifi, but Nicki easily stole the show on that song. So I do think he makes some hot tracks, but I, I don't really consider Consider him an album artist, and maybe he doesn't consider himself an album artist either. Six Nine is just one of those rappers out there right now who who functions as a, a guy who just writes hits. And I'm not really above shallow, dumb, fun music. You guys know that. But I think I've made some pretty cogent arguments as to why some of Six Nine's music is pretty weak. You haven't really brought a counterpoint to any of those, so your tweet is piss. I love Johnny Cash, but his version of Hurt is completely overrated and is only praised so highly because it was released around the time he passed away. It's a little brutal, but I, I, I don't know if I fully agree. I think Johnny Cash's version of Hurt is very good, and I think it does uh, put the song in a folkier, more intimate context that I think uh, a lot of listeners connect with a lot more easily than Trent's, than Trent's version. Which, wrapping that song in the vast industrial aesthetics uh, of the record that it appears on, uh, I mean, the song is good. The record is good. Nine Inch Nails, godly musical project. 
But uh, I don't know. I don't, I don't think you could really deny that, that that Johnny brought something to the song that Trent didn't. Should bands made up of kids, <laughs> Calpurnia, who are professionally releasing music, be judged and critiqued? how bands made up of adults doing the same thing are? I guess it depends on what their intended audience are. Like, okay, they're kids and they're in a band, but are they just trying to write like silly teen pop? Are they just trying to write music for kids? Or are they trying to appeal to a large audience, even an adult audience? If so, then I think they should be judged on the same merits that you would any other album that is trying to appeal to a large audience and probably an adult audience. Because honestly, I think young kids, if they are talented enough, if they do have uh, the chops or the ideas, could make a record that appeals to a wider, that appeals to an older, that appeals to even a pickier audience. In this decade and even prior, there's been no shortage of people who have recorded and made great music who are 16, 17, or even younger. New Jack Swing needs to come back. I wouldn't be against a New Jack Swing comeback. Honestly, it, it didn't get as much time in the sun as many other genres did who were around in its heyday, but, but, uh, we're still waiting on uh, a new metal comeback. We're still waiting on uh, the fourth wave of ska right now. Uh, there are a lot of other genres of music <laughs> that are, are uh, waiting to come back. They're in the queue already. So New Jack Swing, it, it might take a little while. But there actually were like some New Jack Swing moments off of Bruno Mars's last album, and those songs are pretty hot. So maybe kind of already happening? Listening to a leaked song slash album is incredibly disrespectful to the artist and their creative process. Yeah, I don't I don't know about that. I mean, certainly you are, I, I guess, spoiling the album for yourself if it leaked and it came out before the record release and you're not listening to it, you're not streaming it on a platform that actually puts money into the into the artist's pocket. I would call that maybe a, a bit of a slight against the artist and their effort and their attempts at trying to make a living doing what they're doing. I don't know if I would raise it to the level of being incredibly disrespectful though. You know, um, it, it, on the moral plane, it's, it's less of a felony and more of a misdemeanor. Though, let me clarify, even if you do listen to some leaked album, once the album is out, Listen to that shit on a streaming platform or purchase that shit if you want to support the artist, please. Don't just sit back and just listen to the leak like an asshole. Space Ghost Perp doesn't get enough credit. You can literally see his influence everywhere, which is absolutely true. Uh, dude was a huge influence on ASAP Rocky. A lot of his earlier, buzzier cloud rap albums, uh, I do think set the tone for a lot of the spacier sounds we hear in hip hop today. However, I do think there is something to be said for having great ideas, having ideas that have influence, but then also being an artist who can present those ideas effectively and make them translate in a way where people want to hear them on a record. And unfortunately, while I do think Space Ghost Perp did present a lot of great ideas in his music uh, early on, I think other artists just did a better job of presenting those ideas, which is why they went on to garner so much more fame than he did. So yes, while Space Ghost Perp influential guy, pioneer, trailblazer, I would say in a lot of respects he had very much the same opportunities as many other rappers did in his field with very hot, very uh, well-reviewed mixtapes. He was signed to even 4AD and the indie scene was just like, oh my God, who's this guy? I really want to listen to this album. A lot of people listened to the record and they were underwhelmed. And as a result, uh, interest in his music kind of fell off. Meanwhile, ASAP Rocky, was writing hits. And unfortunately, even in the underground, that's that's what carries a lot of weight. That's what carries the careers of a lot of artists. Anime soundtracks are killer and do not get enough love. Akira, Clanet, and Evangelion have soundtracks that every time I listen to a specific song, I remember exactly what is happening in the show slash movie. Anime soundtracks are pretty fucking awesome. Uh, Samurai Champloo, uh, freaking Cowboy Bebop, top tier anime soundtrack right there, top tier anime soundtrack for sure, without a doubt. Um, yeah, I, I guess, yeah, they, they don't get 
enough love. Uh, some of them are pretty generic, but depending on what anime you're listening to, uh, some anime soundtracks are pretty, pretty fire. Tyler the Creator's Colossus is a much better song about fandom than Eminem's Stan. I can see why your opinion might slant this way, but I think Stan is forever going to be the more iconic of those two songs because the narrative framing that Eminem presents on that track is so much better and a lot easier for a larger audience to uh, sort of consume and understand. Plus, I also think uh, Eminem's character portrayal on that track is so much bolder and upfront, uh, to the point where the character really kind of lives in your head as you're listening to the song, which is why Stan, uh, despite the fact that people just hate Eminem so much these days. That term has transcended that track and has become like such a, a necessary word and colloquialism in, in hip hop culture and music culture at large. Bees are underrated, yo. Bees pollinate your food, bitch. Appreciate the bees. I hope, I hope the, the bees, bees are still, still dying, dying at an alarming rate. rate. Dave Matthews Band doesn't deserve the ridicule they get. I get their white people music status, but the band itself is quite talented. I mean, back in the day, I, I used to like uh, some Dave Matthews Band. I used to dig on some Crash. Uh, used to dig on some, I eat too much, I drink too much. Back in their time, they were a pretty fun and funky band, and I can very much acknowledge that they have an incredible amount of musical talent, uh, instrumental prowess in their records, but I, I don't think that's everything. You know, over the years, I, I think the song quality is really drifted, even if their live performances still continue to be very good. Vince Staples is a better rapper than you give him credit for. He brings tight bars and unique instrumentals to every song, not to mention his lyrical ability is incredible. Look, in my reviews of Vince Staples' music, many of which have been positive, especially on the EP side of things, uh, I have acknowledged exactly what you've said here. However, I think that Vince isn't really the total package in terms of songwriting, song structuring, bringing great hooks out there. I don't know if I think he's the best lyricist on the block or anything, but I think he can hold his own. I think he's an entertaining and a smart rapper. However, he's making records. This is not a cipher. So if you're making songs, I'm gonna judge those songs on the merits that I do other songs. And if your songs are lacking in the structural qualities that typically make songs great and aren't making up for that in any way, shape, or form, then that's gonna be a mark against you. Maroon 5 is the last dying breath of early 2000s pop music industry trying to stay hip with the kids. Honestly, I, I would like to agree with this tweet, but that album has been in the top 40 uh, of, of albums since it came out. It's still like in the top 30 or 20 right now, which is fucking insane to me. So I, I really don't think you can call it a dying breath. It's holding on. It's got a firm grasp. It refuses to die. And I think we are going to leave it at that. Thank you everyone for watching this newest episode of Let's Argue. Uh, you're the best. I love you, I hope you're having a good one, and uh, over here next to my head is another episode in the series, hit that up or the link to subscribe to the channel, Anthony Fantano, argue, 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 forever.